Afternoon everyone. Um, in this video we're going to talk about the book of Clagli Clagliostro, or as I'm going to call it the double dip. Um, so I did, I made a longer video talking about new combo stuff, ideas I had with like Jim and Mario and stuff like that. And maybe I'll release it, but at the end of the video, you know, I brought up this card because Jim had brought it up and you know, now that we have more tactics cards available to us, at least slots, you know, there are some, we were thinking about some of the convocation cards that could really maybe come back and see play. Um, and this was one that was just brought up untested at the time. And you know what? I want to take another look at it. And as I was speaking about it to them and in the video, the other video, I got kind of excited about it. And I said, I'm not going to release. I'm just going to make its own video. Um, so that I could talk a little bit about it more and not have it be lost in the back of a 40 minute episode. So this is an untested by me, purely theoretical at this point, breakdown of this card. And I think it's going to come from looking at it a, a different way. Uh, and then we're going to, we're going to see if it's, it's good or not. And so, you know, when we look at these convocation cards and, you know, we can take a step back and say, okay, we have eight cards, right? One is the leadership, is the leadership here, and then Iron Mountain Books, which we're going to take, right? I think the next two that kind of fall in line are Plain of Poldock and Bane of Dal Dambala, Bane, as I call it. You give root out to people, you get rerolls, right? Both, I think, are good cards. Um, I probably, le I was a really big Bane player, but I dueled and then I dropped things for a while. Now that I'm not dueling and have more space because, like, eyes is gone. I, I take planes because I, like, put in Magic, who's more fighty, and stuff like Shang, potentially. So, it goes up and down. And so then you're left with three other cards, right? Three, four, three. Astral Ring, Orb, and Wand. I did a whole Astral Ring video. Um, I still think a lot of it applies. Uh, Wand... To just talk about it really quickly, I, I feel like this card is only to make Wong relevant. Like, cancel everything on this card and just say, two power, Wong gets a pretty strong attack that gives good conditions. If you don't get the, if you don't get the wild, it'd be pretty sad. It's only seven dice, but it is on a guy who only rolls two four dice attacks from range two. So, it's one of those ones that's kind of nice if somebody's on like one or two health and they're really far away. To like walk and do it with Wong so you're not wasting like somebody else's activation doing it. It's not high on my list. So why we're talking about this one is just from the start, I think, you know, kind of to bring the, maybe the summation of the video into the beginning, just so you understand where I'm coming from, is I feel like this card could potentially have very, a very high impact type of card. And so, you know, again, I will get into this card, but, you know, we think of things like Brace for Impact, right? Everyone takes it, uh, pretty much. Um, the reason, it, it's, it's high impact, it has a lot of uses, you're basically negating, you know, you're negating known damage, you can prevent a, a key daze or something like that. And I'll say Book, the Double Dip, doesn't have, it doesn't have that, like, known quantity type thing to it. It, it it's a little i'll say deeper than that but i think that's what kind of makes me love it the more i'm thinking about it um now i might use it and be it might be crap and i'd be totally off base but let's let's go through the theory of it right so first off i want you to read this card and i'm gonna read it to you choose a convocation character so it only works on convocation characters then choose the chosen character and two other characters within three May spend two power each to play this card. So it's going to cost you three characters, two power each, six power, and they have to be within three. Those are some pretty hefty restrictions. Like, this is not a a joke, right? Like, it, it's going to cost six power, and you got to get people near each other. And one, the person who's using it can only be Convocation. So you're only talking, like, Strange, Magic Voodoo, uh, and whoever else you have affiliated Wong. They're probably not playing this with Wong. Um... They remove the activated token. And then during the cleanup phase, you may discard two team Texas cards if you do, blah, blah, blah. First off, I want you to, to think about, cut off the bottom part. Don't worry about bringing it back. Don't worry about the value of bringing it back. There were, I know there are some weird things with like Honey Badger's Jonathan and books where you can like, 
use that to kind of swap in cards and whatnot. And, you know, the fact that you're discarding them, you maybe get it back. I, I think you should really just say, forget about that. Will there potentially be a moment where you play this card and then you get it back because you're like, oh, they didn't take as many throws as I thought? Potentially. Or they didn't have as much physical attacks as I thought and I don't need my books. Sure. But we're... Uh, and you could also do it, like, if you do use it early enough, throw away books and then you could get it back. But then you're not, like, if you're playing this turn two and then throwing away books at the end of phase two, you're not playing books until turn four, so it's really not probably good in that case the point being is pretend that this can't come back right we're not going to make some weird engine to bring this card back i also want you to kind of take out of your mind that any idea of playing this card turn one right or at least that is that's not a hundred percent true it's not about you not playing this card one it's don't expect we're not making a plan to use this card turn one that's the thing. We're not making some weird, like, we're going to take Ancient One and Hulk and Strange and, you know, Strange is going to go up and do something and then Ancient One and Hulk are not going to interact or do anything and, and give their power to Strange so they can... Don't... We're not going to think about that. Okay? So when you get that out of your mind, just think about, like, the flow of games. Like, on tighter scenarios, especially, like, turns two, three, four... It's not unreasonable to have this setup where it's three people, you know, close together with two power each, right? That's not unreasonable to have. Especially when you consider, like, bumps and stuff like that and, and building power and whatnot. Especially on, like, E-shapes, maybe tighter ones. So, where do I think the use case comes in? I think there's, there's a couple big ones, and you can kind of expand from here when you, you kind of think of the, the base ones as... You can use it to manipulate priority. You can use it... So, like, if you want to go last on Researcher, right? That's the simple case, right? A simple case is... You do your turn. You want to go last on Researcher. So, you... You know, you do Strange early or something. And then, you know... With your second to last activation, right before they get to go with their last model... You unactivate Strange, and now you get to go last and either move somebody on the Researcher or teleport somebody off, potentially, right? So you're manipulating that, um, that uh, who, gets, who gets priority and who gets to go last, which has some uses in and of itself. That's, that's kind of an easy one to think about. I kind of don't hate that one. Um, what I like it for from a potential perspective is... Especially this is why I think turn two, three, four, it makes a little more sense. Is, so imagine a, a, a turn where Strange goes first, right? Which is not unheard of on turn two or three, especially since I'm like more aggressive with Strange. Just imagine a turn where he goes first, does his thing, teleports people away, and then he gets hit, right? Somebody punches him back, and he bumps somewhere, and he's, he's almost dead, right? Because you can play this card in between your turns like you don't have to choose who activates first in technically you could and you don't even need extra power if strange ends the turn on two power you do his whole turn you teleport people you you, sh you hit him with your builder you have two power left if even if they don't touch strange assuming you have people in range at least and you might not you could play this card unactivate strange and then activate him again so you could double dip as the name straight away on strange activations um i'm thinking of scenarios where uh the one that comes to mind really is like you activate strange i'm mean, gonna use strange i think you can kind of voodoo is the other one that kind of comes to mind but even magic i mean if you're just doing two attacks um then they all have pierces and stuff like five dice mystic pierce but strange is the best example right let's just say you, you go with strange you do your shit right and then somebody attacks him, right? And now he's on one health. You could play this card immediately between turns, activate Strange, and do something again with potentially a lot of power on Strange. Um, and get to, the, like I said, double dip. Teleport people away again. Maybe they... Because you got to remember, they're thinking from a way of... Oh, Strange already went. He already has power. I don't care if I power him up. I'm going to kill him in two activations, right? He's not going anywhere. Maybe you have an extract or something. And all of a sudden, you reactivate 
you double di- and you either get him out of there or you teleport somebody away and run away or you kill somebody who's about to go like their next person's gonna go um because maybe the people you have around in that situation aren't like maybe it's like wong hanging there and like somebody else with two power that you don't want to go yet and you just go with strange again so i think that could be a big one like he gets a lot of power because he builds a lot of power period um and you like to spend your power but you don't always you don't always spend your power right away and you can you can kind of wait and then maybe they get put you on one health and then you get a, a six dice spender because you bumped into a perfect position or you get a three person spender and then you die afterwards or you clear a bunch of conditions after they think you can't um stuff like that uh, also you can double move people so if you like do your turn and like teleport hulk away example and then maybe they attack you or whatever if you get to reactivate you could walk move hulk again and then back up again so you could definitely double throw somebody away in that kind of instance um so i think that's like an interesting case of it is just straight up you're in the middle of a scrum they put a lot of damage on you you have a lot of power you already went first in the turn and now you get to go again the other thing like right away but you can also just hold it right if you're gonna have so i think there's turns we'll call them swing turns whatever where you're going to have last activation anyway. You kill a key model, something like that. Because of the way this card is. So you, the only thing you can't do is activate Strange last and then instantly activate Strange again. But sometimes, uh, Wong is a good example. Sometimes Wong is your last activation. And it feels weird because in the beginning he's usually an early activation. But he might be your last activation because you're being very proactive with the rest of your team. Because you want to either kill somebody or get things going, right? And so sometimes what can happen is you go with Strange early, he doesn't get to where you really want to go, he doesn't have, you know, he's not going last to, like, rearrange the board, for example, whatever, whatever. This is, like, an opportunity where if you're going last, you now have Wong's activation. Depending on where the board is set up, you could walk into a position, take somebody's token away, and then get to activate them, so you actually get back-to-back last activations... Which could be really huge. So, you know, think of it this way. You know, you're, you're in the middle of Gamma. Again, these are just made-up situations, but they can expand if you just think about it. You're in the middle of Gamma. Strange went early, teleported, blah, blah, blah. He gets hit. He has some power, but they're not attacking him anymore. Maybe they're going to try to kill him at the top of turn with priority, for example. Um, you just reactivate Strange. You know, you have last activation. You go up on a Wong, heals him, reactivates him. He gets, to tell, he gets to walk to their back gamma and teleport somebody off and win the back gamma. It, it, like, that could be like a three-point swing, and there's nothing they can do about it, and you don't have to play the card. I think that's the other thing, too. Again, it might you might come to this thing where too many models are dazing or whatnot, and you just never get to play it. I don't know. But the fact is, like, so why does double agent suck, right? People, we talk about double agent, um, and it's one of those cards that when it came out with Spider-Woman... Um, I thought it was actually good. I thought it was really good. Because I'm used to Malifo where activating twice is really strong. Um, and you say, you look at this and say, why isn't this a good card, right? Okay, so it's two power. The other one costs six. Um, so listen to It has to be played in the activation phase at the beginning. So, like, if you have priority, you basically can't play this. You can play it, but then the enemy knows... Which basically you're forcing the enemy to instantly activate that model. And it might be a good idea. Like it's kind of funny in that case. Um, Two is you have to activate her first. And you can waste it by that, right? So you're you're kind of forcing yourself to activate Spider-Woman early. Which is, is kind of true for the other card. It's not untrue. But if they go kill her, they can... There's no instantaneous, like, thing. Like, the example I said was Strange, right? Where you go with Strange, they do some damage to you, you activate Strange again, that type of shit. You can't do that here because they're, you're, on the, you're on their time of, like, when they choose to activate their other person, whoever you chose. So, if you daze that person, you can't daze that person, um, you... If they wait till it's their last activation, um, you might die in between that. Uh, they might use it to kind of screw over your prio, potentially. I mean, you can actively... And you, there's nothing you can do about it at that point. It, 
basically it's the ch- it's the choice, and you're activating Spider Woman twice. Like, she's a four threat. And she's fine, but she she is not like game ending. Oh my god, I'm going twice type model, right? She can do things where like walk to interrogate and whatnot. I think the fact that it, that she it's she it's her is not like the end of the world. I think it's the other limitations that were put on it that you can just get screwed by the enemy and it's too un and if you if you do it wrong or if it there's there's less opportunity. And so when you go back to what we were looking at before, which is um oh, it's book, book, the double dip. If you look at this, you you can never unless you like use it and then hold off on, on activating that person for one turn. Which you can do, and there are reasons to do that. Well, only if you're worried about somebody dying in between. There's there's reasons you would do it. You can basically actively do it whenever you think it's best, right? That's one of the nice parts. So another one would be, sometimes you go with Voodoo early to like do stuff. Like You want to make sure they drop their token before you know they get to run away or something. And maybe they hit... And, and he... He has a lot of energy building, obviously. But then sometimes later in the turn, people steal stuff from you. And maybe you want to... Like, there's a moment where, like, if you're playing a cagey game where, like, people who want to steal and, like, you steal something and then Voodoo gets hit, maybe he has a lot of power. Like, it's kind of interesting to be like, oh, I'm going to activate Voodoo again at the end of my turn and, like, run somewhere and, like, drop somebody's tokens at the last minute, right? Like, you get to do it twice. Um... I actually, like, I think this card has a lot of potential if you don't play it. Don't try to do a turn one, and don't try to reset it. Just just think of it as a another strange activation where, I mean, you can't be playing strange like a, like a super bitch, and it won't work. I mean, maybe you can we get you snipe people. I mean, you could get, if you think about it, you could be paying six power to do two builders. And if you think about that, like, from strange's perspective, right, like, it's six power, but if you're doing two attacks, you're getting the power back, right? So, like, it's kind of a, a wash there. If you're using one of your people or Wong, do you really give a shit? Um, but it could easily be power for, like, three or three BP, VPs, um, depending on the moment. And in a, in a game, yeah, I think it's really, like, those turns where... I think the ones that come to mind are end of turn when you either want last activation or like you want to have the last activation. So you reset somebody and then you save like your guy for last. If it's like, um, if it's like researcher or something like that. And that might be something you want to do anyway, because you don't care about prior that much. If it's not like a super fighting team, um, there's also the double dip on the last activation, which I think is really cool. That's the one I like the most because you have the most control over it. Like, if if essentially if Strange is within two, you know, if Strange is the model and he's he within two, three of another, one other person, your last person can walk into position to, to do it, right? And you don't even have to, like, end there. So, like, I'll give you an example would be, and I wish I just, I should have put something up, but. You know, let's say Strange is in the middle, some Wong's within three, sitting there. You could like walk Voodoo within three of Strange, play this card, and then finish Voodoo's activation somewhere else. Like you don't have to end there, um, and then you get to do Strange again. I, I mean, I just like that potential could be really, really big. And if, like I said, if Strange is on a lot of power, he might just double walk, teleport somebody away. Um, Maybe he just stole a bunch of extracts, but he couldn't get out. And they started attacking him, and you just activate him again right away. Like, he bumps into range, activate him again, run away. Like, really get away from the enemy type stuff. Um, Voodoo has a lot of potential for it. Um, like I said, it, it's one of those... It's like, like fallback, sacrifice. Like, those are opportunistic cards. And their opportunity cost is pretty easy right you can play around them you as an enemy you can see stuff you can play around this card in some aspects but you know you're probably going to find good fallback value at some point i think that this card is in the realm of that idea but it is much harder to set up 
but it could potentially be much, much more impactful than like a good fallback. This is how I'm thinking about it. This might be, you know what? One of the reasons they might not give us like really strong new models is this card. Because this card, it actually would be insane if we had like a super convocation like six threat or something, like uber strange or something. Because it's not that bad to play it. <laughs> Um, but maybe I've convinced you to at least try it. Like, I think you just throw it in your team where you may put fallback or something and just see if a situation comes up. If you're against like even webs and stuff, like this might just be two attacks that you get to, you get to just do when you want to. And that you're probably going to build the power back depending on what you're doing. You know, if you're doing two like voodoo spender or voodoo attacks or something like that. Um, Again, I, I think in the more I think about it and ha not having played it, I think what's going to happen is it's going to... Be, people like to attack activated... Not maybe people like to attack activated things, but I think it's going to be some situation where people attack somebody you have activated or even they attack you beforehand and you just... So I, two things. Somebody goes and attacks one of your models and puts a lot of damage on it, so you naturally go with that model next so you can save their activation... And then they don't finish you off, and you still have power, and you just do it again. That kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to call it the double dip, because I don't know how to say that word. Um, and I think, like, on top of just, like, you can... Pl the enemy can play around it to some extent, but there is a lot, like, in this game to play around with bumps and just natural convocation weird things that... I actually believe this card could... I don't even want to call it catch somebody out. But it's just like you can't do anything about it. And they just... They just pull it off early. Or like turn two or three on a big swing turn. And you just can't come back from it. 